Purple Daily is daily Vikings entertainment. Do you just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die? I will ride with this group. Seriously, man. Please. And away we go. Time to make our picks. Gentlemen, the most anticipated game on the schedule to this point. And I think we've decided after a couple episodes kicking this around. The most anticipated Lions-Vikings matchup ever in terms of how good both teams are at the same time. And as Patrick Royce said on the Friday Royce Unchained, it's the Lions' fault really more than the Vikings that they don't clash as good teams more often. So we'll get into uh, just some key questions for the game, what the Sharps are saying, and then we'll make our official picks presented in part by these Pepsi 32-ounce Justin Jefferson souvenir cups right here. Look at him. Just rocking it. Justin Jefferson uh, on the side of these brand new cups, which you can find inside local Hy-Vee Fast and Fresh locations. There's a QR code on the side of these, which allows you to scan it and enter to win Victor's Ride, a Vikings themed Polaris ATV. You could be the you could be the toast of the neighborhood just driving around in these fall and winter conditions. Jason from Egan won it last year. It was a whole thing that the Vikings brought it out with the skull line and Victor and CJ Ham. So go get your Justin Jefferson souvenir cups at Hy-Vee Fast and Fresh locations right now and continue to send us photos at Phil Mackey on Twitter slash X of those cups. And uh, yeah, let's have a party, a Pepsi party. So first question for you guys, what are you most confident in on behalf of the Vikings going into this game? Well, if the report uh, by Ian Rappaport NFL media on Friday was true. Aaron Jones is going to play on Sunday. I'm most confident, and this might sound weird, I'm most confident the Vikings are going to be able to pass the ball. Uh, Detroit is hmm. 27th when it comes to passing defense. Now, that can be skewed by leads. I, I mean, the Vikings are 30th. Is it because their defense sucks? No. It's because they've taken substantial leads and teams pass, and you're going to give up passing yards. But nonetheless, you have Jefferson, Addison, Boy. Naylor, and with Jones, you've got the threat of a screen game and you've got play action can work because now the Lions have to respect that. They can't just be, they can't be like, oh, you're going to, you know, that's cute. You're going to hand off the ball to Miles Gaskin. No, you're not. So I am most confident that the Vikings can pass the ball. The last thing is we could talk about Detroit defensively. Yes, they're solid. The loss of Aiden Hutchinson as a rusher is mammoth. I think Kevin O'Connell is going to unleash the football through the hand of Sam Darnold, who hopefully bounces back from a tough game against the Jets, a really good Jets defense. That's what I'm most confident about. Uh, I'm most confident that U.S. Bank Stadium is pretty much peaking right now. I mean, over the last few home games, it's just been loud as hell in there. And for good reason, the Vikings have given them good reasons to cheer. And I'm excited that this game is at home. If, if this game was on the road coming out of the bye, I would actually, I feel like I'd have a lot more concerns, even with Hutchinson being out for the Lions. Agreed. Aaron Jones' status may be trending towards playing, but regardless, not at 100%. So I'd be more concerned. I'm most confident that U.S. Bank Stadium coming off a bye, waiting for this team to come back home after not playing a home game for a few weeks, is going to be rocking and going to be absolutely in Jared Goff's ear. And I, I'm I'm in, I'm most confident about the environment the Vikings are playing in front of their home fans. That's what I'm most confident about. Yeah, it should be it should be pretty wild. I'm I'm looking at this is what I'm most confident in. Sam Darnold is really good with a clean pocket, and I'm confident he's going to get a lot of clean pocket throws in this game. Aiden Hutchinson led the NFL with 45 pressures before his injury. The next closest Lions have 17, 16, and 7. And the 7 is Marcus Davenport, who's just – is he? he's out for the season again? Yeah, yeah he's – shockingly has been lost for the season. <laughs> like – Thoughts and prayers. But how much money did he collect? What's his guarantee? Let's That's just like, take a look here. What does he maybe even is? Because didn't he get a fifth-year option with the Saints? So, like, that probably – First-round pick, yeah. He's been on free agent contracts. It was $6.5 million, okay. including $3 million guaranteed – well, and then I don't know. I if, take it. <laughs> so good, good luck. Congrats to the Davenport family for having generational money. But yeah, it is. They're gonna have to scheme things up. Now, when you when you do pressure Sam Darnold, things can go haywire. Uh, but they're they're probably gonna have to blitz to get pressure. And Darnold can pick apart a part of blitz because he knows the answers to the test that Kevin O'Connell gives him. 
So I would just say I'm confident that the Lions are going to have a hard time without blitzing getting pressure on Sam Darnold, and Darnold has been really good with a clean pocket, like one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL so far this season. Mm-hmm. Um, what are you most nervous about on behalf of the Vikings? So I am confident. I like the Vikings. Obviously, defensively, Brian Flores has done a great job. The Lions, though, offense is going to present um, a challenge. They are in total offense, averaging 416 yards a game. That puts them third. Passing and rushing offense, they are fourth. And in points per game, they are, ladies and gentlemen, first. 30.2, the only team I believe in the entire league, averaging more than 30 points per game. Hmm. That's going to present some challenges, no question. Now, do I, I think that the Vikings are going to come out with a plan for this, be well prepared? Yes. Do I think that the Vikings can shut Detroit down? Maybe a little bit passing-wise, I do think that. Running-wise, concerns me, and here's why. Blake Cashman is out. Blake Cashman has been outstanding. And what do you see when you watch a Vikings game? Just eye test. He's everywhere. Like in the run game, he's everywhere. Um, Grugier Hill did a nice job when Pace was out for two games, but I argue now I think Cashman's more instrumental to this defense than Pace is. So the Lions' ability offensively and can you stop the run does concern me. So I'm going to take what you guys are kind of confident with parts of Sam Darnold, but it is what still makes me nervous is Sam Darnold. And yes, he had a bye week to kind of reset things and some self-scouting with Kevin O'Connell, which is important. And, you know, the Lions defense, at least against the pass, isn't great. But those last six quarters, man, I mean, that that, those weren't just those weren't just average quarters. It was bad quarterback play against good defenses. No doubt. Jets are one of the best defenses in the NFL. Packers, too, have a pretty good D. But over six quarters, he looked like a pumpkin of himself. And I'm just I'm still concerned about is is the first four and a half games? Was that more of a fluke? There was things that I really liked about Sam Darnold that I think were sustainable. And I think the bumpers, as Judd has used, uh kind of like a bowling alley analogy with Sam Darnold and Kevin O'Connell's offense has still uh lifted him up and played a lot better. But I'm still concerned that Sam Darnold is maybe turning into a pumpkin and they can't afford for Sam Darnold to play. I mean, the Nick Mullins break glass case of emergency, that is a true emergency, and we're going down. That's not a save you emergency. So uh, my, my most the thing I'm most nervous about is is Sam Darnold's legitimacy, I guess. Yeah, definitely, because at any given time, he could just kind of we, – we have not seen like a full season of good Sam Darnold yet, so it's, it's on him to, to prove it. Yep. So I agree with you on that. I'm going to say – Stopping the Lions rushing attack to kind of Judd touched on a couple of these things, but man, that team has two excellent running backs. They might have two of the top like 12 running backs in the league in Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery and the best offensive line. They oftentimes bring an extra, they bring Skipper in to have, I think they do that more often than pretty much any team in the NFL. Super creative play calling. And the one thing they've done a lot in the last two years, but especially now that they've been rolling the last two weeks, they jump out to sizable leads. Like they'll they'll be up twenty one seven on you in the second quarter, like they were against Seattle, or you know, was it seventeen rip or seventeen three against the Cowboys really early? And they just lean on that running game and that play action, and they put the linebackers in the in the middle of the field in a spin cycle. The Lions have rushed for a buck 63, 139, 187, 116, and 184 yards in their five games so far this year. Yep. And I know the Vikings statistically have one of the best run defenses in the NFL, but it helps when the Vikings have had huge leads early on in the season. And it's just a lot harder for the opposing team to get a run game going when they're down by two or three touchdowns. So if the Lions jump out and it's 10 nothing, doesn't mean the game's over, but do they start to get it going in the run game and now play action? And it's just a game flow that you haven't had to face so far in the first month and a half. That's what I'm nervous about. And the run game is one really good way, if you can take a lead, to quiet a crowd. For sure. Because now, now you're just grounding and pounding all afternoon. Mm. <sighs> yeah, they've also, in terms of rushing touchdowns, they have a rushing touchdown in every game, multiple rushing touchdowns in three of the five games, including five rushing touchdowns in the last two weeks. So they get it into the red zone and they pound. It's just, it is, it is the hardest team in terms of offensive line and running back tandem 
probably to stop on the ground outside of if you take away like the Lamar Jackson type running games where you've got a read option with a mobile quarterback, that's a different thing to stop. If it's just traditional pocket passer handing off to a really good set of running backs, this is this is the best in the NFL. So what what you're saying is that they impose their will on you. They impose their will up front on you. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Football. Thank you. No. Is anyone playing or coaching for their job on either side in this game? Oh, Detroit, I don't think so. I don't know for sure. Um, I think Ingram might be. There, there this is like the be, third week we've kind of brought up Ed like, Ingram. Well, there, 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 there seems to be more of a buzz. I saw a tweet uh, from Ben Gessling about this from the Star Tribune yesterday, just about the fact that he felt that the way Reisner was uh, talking after his first practice back, that Ed might be in some trouble. Now, you know, on, on – PD, meat, and, and potatoes. Tyler Fornes has brought a case to the table that Ed Ingram is not as bad as we think. And I don't know how the Vikings feel about this. They but agree with him, right? Because Reisner, Reisner is back. I mean, do I love the fact that a guy who hasn't played right guard and is not particularly good in run blocking might take the job? Probably not. Do I think it's a possibility now that it at least now there's a viable option, right? Like it felt like before... Feeney's a backup center. Uh, they didn't really have a guy that was going to take the place of Ingram. So, yeah, I guess Ed might be, actually. Yeah, I mean, at some point, at some point, if you're the weak link and it continues to go that way. Um, and I would say if he has a bad game against a Detroit defensive front that doesn't include Aiden Hutchinson, because, like, Aiden Hutchinson's going to give everyone problems. And so I don't know that you would, like, ding him too much if he got smoked on a couple twists by Aiden Hutchinson. Right. But there's no Aiden Hutchinson, so you need to have a good game here. Otherwise, I would strongly consider going to Feeney or Reisner. I've got a question off of this, though, because it's sort of a – so it feels like a potential damned if you do, damned if you don't decision. So Ingram gets abused in pass pro a lot. I believe his run blocking grades are good, right? Okay. Uh, Better than his. might be strong. Sure. Reisner in pass pro is much better than Ed is, but his run blocking grades, as I recall, at left guard were crap. So what's the sacrifice here? I mean, do do you do you tend towards more we think that Darnold should be kept as clean as possible? Do you tend towards more, well, hold on a second, our run game has finally gotten going, and now we're, we're going to put in a guy? Like, that That would be my one philosophical question if I if I was allowed to sit at the big table. What if you platoon him and again. you just telegraph what, what play is coming? You know? All right, you here comes here comes do. Reisner. It's you probably a you, pass. You know what you could do to try and keep, keep him off balance? Do what you just said Detroit does. Go heavy, but occasionally with a pass. So you throw him off balance. So you'd actually use them at the same time. I mean, in the red Go zone, heavy. in the red zone, it is kind of genius. And what Double. the what what the Lions will do too is like they'll put the extra they'll put the extra lineman out there, and then they'll run like they'll run some motion going that way. But then the play is actually going the other way, and it, it's very confusing yeah. for just, defenses to figure out. I, I'm just saying, you might have hit on something. Who was the big guard that made the huge play against the Vikings last year that caught the pass as an eligible receiver? Who was Forget. that? I, I thought um, that was a tackle. Was it a tackle? I, I, I knew it was a lineman. But I um, was it Sewell? Was it was Sewell? Sewell? Yeah. He yeah, was an eligible receiver. An athlete. Yeah, it was awesome. I love those plays. Yeah, they're very, very creative, Detroit. Okay, let's go through playoff odds here, and then we'll get to what the Sharps are saying about this game. So according to the New York Times, they've got their little like projection current playoff odds and Super Bowl odds. The Vikings have a 95% chance to make the playoffs. A 61% chance to make uh, to win the division, and then a 14% chance to win the Super Bowl, which is up from 10% the last time we did this. In fact, the only team that has a higher percentage chance to win the Super Bowl is the Chiefs at 16%. So it's Chiefs 16%, Vikings 14%, and then it's 8% for Bills and Ravens, and then Lions and Texans are 7%. Kind of crazy. Um, the Lions go into this game with an 81% chance to make the playoffs. And like I said, a 7% chance to win the whole thing. 
And then I don't know if does it allow you to like uh, pick a game here. I don't think it does. But You're Declan brought it up. Er, You're going Childress. Uh, 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 <laughs> but Declan brought it up yesterday that this is whoever wins this game is going to be like the division odds are yeah. going to be flipping big time here. Yeah. Well, yeah, especially for the Vikings. So this is from Aaron Schatz. So if the Vikings win, the Vikings have a 71% chance to win the North. And then it goes in order if the Vikings win. Detroit at 13, Green Bay 12, Chicago 4. So like a Vikings win puts them 70% of the time winning this division. Yeah. If the Lions win, this division race gets incredibly tight. So that moves Detroit into the favorite, but only at 45% chance to win the division. Vikings at 35%, so not a death knell to the Vikings. Hmm. Green Bay at 15, Chicago at 5. So literally, the Vikings could go from a 71% chance to win the North with a win or just a 35% chance. To, I mean, that's huge. So yeah. big swing, big swing. Also, they have projected records on here too. So the Chiefs projected record is 13-4. and four. The Vikings are projected to have the second best record in the NFL at the end of the year at 12-5. and five. Mackey. So send your angry send your angry tweets and emails to the New York Times and the Athletic. Last year, the Ravens had the best record in the league at 13 and 4. Niners, Cowboys, Lions were all 12 and 5. So 12 and 5. I know 5 and 0 oh, people would be disappointed if they lost five games between now and the end of the year, but you play in the best division of football. You got some other tough non-division games. In most years, you don't see 13 and 14 win teams very often. 12 wins would still be a really, really good season. Just bracing people. 12 and 5, it might be time for a change. Yep. I feel like that's how people are reacting. It might be time for a coaching change. I mean, I I, I like O'Connell. Sorry, but Kevin. I know you. <laughs> Not only is there no extension, you're fired. Oh, uh, why don't you open up door number two there, huh, Kevin? Yeah, you're Brandon. fired. You're ah. <sighs> What the Sharps are saying about this game. <laughs> Reminded me of Ac something. Action Network. Hmm? I, I just saw that, that thing on tw Twitter where, where the, the uh, wrestler is in the back of, of the ambulance. and and Stone Cold. Yeah, Stone Cold to the back of the ambulance. And all, all of a sudden, what? The Undertaker? <laughs> the Undertaker's the driving the ambulance. Yeah, he's driving. He comes out and Stone Cold basically breaks character and starts yeah. cracking up. Because it's so funny. <laughs> uh the good old good attitude times. era. You know. <laughs> so via Action Network, I'm just going to read you what the Sharps are saying here. Star edge rusher Aiden Hutchinson led the league with a 38.3% pass rush win rate. Football. So 38%. The next closest edge rusher was Miles Garrett at 27%. Wow. So by far and away, Aiden Hutchinson, best edge rusher in the league this year. Mm-hmm. Detroit runs the fourth highest rate of man coverage in the NFL. Very man coverage heavy team. But Justin Jefferson is averaging over six yards per route run against man defense this year. Yeah. That's insane. Is, yeah. Yeah. And Detroit is banged up. Their cornerbacks are. So, like, I don't know they can get away with, with that to be. Like, I think if you ran run man all that much against Jefferson – well, and last year they ran, they ran a lot of man coverage, and he finished with 300 sure. yards and two touchdowns across two games against that defense. Annihilated him. Meanwhile, Ben Johnson, the Lions' offensive coordinator, uh, the Lions must prepare for the top-ranked defense in the NFL by DVOA. However, it must be noted the Vikings haven't faced an offense that ranks in the top 10 for early down success rate yet this year. Mm. The Lions have the best offense in the league, early down success, putting themselves in third and short. Minnesota blitzes at the highest rate in the NFL, but Jared Goff has been lights out against the blitz this year, leading the NFL with 12 yards per pass attempt when blitzed. O'Connell and Johnson are two of the best play callers in the NFL, and we should see fireworks with both these offenses pushing each other to the limit. So the Vikings are one and a half point favorites right now in this game. 81% of the bets are on the Lions. 86% of the money is on the Lions. Yeah. That makes so sense. The public and it would seem the Sharps are pouring money into Lions getting those 1.5 points. The Vikings blitz rate, while it leads the league, has actually gone down, right? 
from 2023? Yeah, it's gone down from last year. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But so it still last year was like historic <laughs> levels. Right, of, right. Yeah. They blitz Chaos. constantly. Well they, well, they had to. They didn't have the parts not to blitz constantly. But Yep. So, okay, we're going to make our official picks here in just a moment. Who wins straight up and then who covers? But, uh, Judd, you've, you're down, what, 15 pounds with 15 your Livia tune-up here? Yep, exactly right. So, Go. like, when, when you're making picks on football, it's like, okay, one of two, two teams. When it comes to weight loss, there is, ladies and gentlemen, only one pick, and that is my good friends at Livia Weight Control Centers, who, as Phil just said, are helping me with a tune-up down 15 pounds in about a month. And do I have exciting news for you? But you're going to, if you're watching this today on this gorgeous Saturday, you're going to have to act now because – Livia Days, big offers just announced, but today is the last day to get in on the excitement. Award-winning nutrition plans going to help you lose weight, going to help you keep that that weight off. Uh, they also offer GLP-1 medication options tailored just for you. I'm going to tell you right now, the program is easy. Yes, you get some food, but you don't get meals that you got to like find a microwave for. Complete pain, uh-uh. Livia teaches you how, how to eat smart, and they teach you how to make good decisions. And here's the best part. They also have no judgment. So it makes it as easy as possible. Uh, check them out. L-I-V-E-A.com. 855-GO-L-I-V-E-A. Receive eight weeks free off their nutrition plan. That's, ri- that's right. Livia Day is a very limited time offer. Again, Livia.com. 855-GO-L-I-V-E-A. Follow the sports dad's lead. Lose some weight. Winter's coming. You're going to be on the couch, right? You want to take that that weight off now, and you want to pick the only people to pick. That's Livia. I love it. I love Judd assumes that all people are just on the couch during the winter. Like <laughs> well, the a lot of people dead. are on the couch. You gain some weight. You don't like that? Well, lose weight now. Great. Um, if, you, if you're on the couch, why don't you open the Prize Picks app? That's right. Which, so my, my play here for the, the next few days, and you can go cross sports. They're offering an Anthony Edwards free square. Anthony Edwards needs just one point in the Tuesday Wolves opener for that square to win. So I'll, I'll take that. And then I'm going to go because you have to uh, pick at least two between two and six players on prize picks. I think Jordan Addison's going to have a game 51.5 receiving yards. I'll take more on that, as you can see right here. Very easy. Bing, bang. That's how it works. Pick more or less on projected stats. Place your entry. Download the Prize Picks app today and use the code Purple Daily to get fifty dollars instantly when you play just five dollars. That's code Purple Daily on Prize Picks to get fifty dollars instantly when you play just five dollars. Prize Picks run your game. And uh, one more shout out, KS Drywall. Thank you for their partnership, helping to keep Purple Daily a three hundred sixty five day a year show. They provide full drywall, plaster repair, popcorn ceiling texture removal and interior painting services, uh, servicing the greater Twin Cities, Metro, and Western Wisconsin. Just a a great, great crew that comes in and uh, does a very courteous and clean job with quality craftsmanship. Anything from new construction to small emergency repairs, no job is too big or too small. And uh, on the popcorn ceiling texture, older homes often have that, like 1950s, 60s, 70s, maybe 80s. If you plan to sell your house someday, this can be a way to modernize your home and get some more value for it. Head over to ksdrywall.com to schedule a free estimate. That's ksdrywall.com. Okay, boys. Let's go around the room here. Who wins and by how many? Vikings are a 1.5 point favorite. So straight up, Judd is 4 and 1 this season. I am 4 and 1. Declan is 3 and 2. Against the spread, Judd is 5 and 0. Oh. Both Dex and I are four and one. I'm building a new house right season. now. You're doing pretty well. <laughs> building a new house. I'm going to tear this place down. Chaos Drywall is going to help you. Chaos Drywall is going to come out and help. Finch, Finch Home Fidex. Solutions yeah. <laughs> is going to come out and help. UglyDeck.com. They're, they're going to put a new deck on this place. Um, I am. I think this will be a close game. I think it'll be a great game. At least I have my fingers crossed. Um, but I am going to stick with the Vikings and the Vikings to cover. You know, I think they win by about three. Aaron Jones sounds like he's going to play. That tilts me. That tilts me. Like, I got a little bit skittish. Now, Aiden Hutchinson being out for Detroit's huge. Yeah. But Aaron Jones being a part of the Vikings offense, I think, is very, very important. So, I'm gonna, I am gonna, I am going to stick with my triple down. I've said this three times this week. Vikings win and the Vikings cover. I have the Lions winning this game and covering. 
Well, I do. I just, I just think the Lions are the slightly better team, and I'm the Debbie Downer. Uh, cue, cue the face from SNL, Rachel Dratch. But um, I, I just, I, I think, I think the Lions are going to win this game. So I, I, I have the, I have the Lions winning and covering the spread. Okay, all week long, I feel like I've been telegraphing that this is guys. They're not going seventeen and zero. Yep. yep. They're not going seventeen and zero. Like let's. Let's calm down here a little bit. There's going to be some bumps along the way. And the Lions are coming in with a great, creative, punch-you-in-the-mouth offense. At some point, you're going to have to take your medicine. But I I gave myself an out two days ago, and I said, if Aaron Aaron Jones is out, I think it's a huge deal. But with Aiden Hutchinson out for the season, and Aaron Jones, according to NFL Network, likely in... Give me the Vikes. Vikes win, Vikes cover. Dex, by Dex, kill Joy. <laughs> kill Joy. Here we go. Vikings in Bar a thrilling, block. I'll say they win. You know what? Write this down. I don't know if this can be official because it's outside the Wednesday parameters. Big leg Bill kicks a game winner. Sam Darnold gets his first fourth quarter comeback, perhaps, since 2019. Big Bill. Unflappable, assassin, kicking assassin, <laughs> right leg, one there by the is. FBI. <laughs> uh, sorry, sir, you are under arrest yep. for... Uh, Get on the airplane, mur- are you kidding? Murdering that, that, the net behind the goal That right leg is too dangerous. <laughs> so, all right, yeah, let us know in the YouTube comment section who wins and by how many, and then join us tomorrow for Vikings Vent Line, the place to be after every single Vikings game on the Purple Daily YouTube channel. We just want the Vikings to win the Super Bowl before we die.